Hi, uh, I'm Leslie London. I'm a professor of public health at the University of Cape Town, but I'm also a member of the steering committee of People's Health Movement in South Africa, which is a global social movement committed to uh, realizing the right to health across the world. So uh, South Africa has had one of the most severe uh, COVID epidemics, certainly the most severe in Africa, but this epidemic arrived on the back of of an already highly unequal healthcare system. We have a um, healthcare system very divided between public and private, highly unequal, uh, divided urban rural, divided by race. And so it's not surprising that the impact of the epidemic has also seen um, exacerbation of inequality. We've seen, for instance, much higher infection rates in poorer areas of uh, the country and higher mortality rates amongst uh, in black townships compared to other areas. Um, it's been uh, also particularly hard on poor people uh, who, who need to um, achieve livelihood. We have very high rates of unemployment, so large numbers of unemployed people in the informal sector, uh, and that has been particularly difficult to cope with. The government has provided some social security, which has essentially been uh, desperately needed by poor people. Um, it's uh, tried once or twice to try and end that social security, but it won't be possible because of the severe adverse economic impact. So the country really needs to be restarted or rebooted in a way that's much more equal uh, and that going forward people have decent access to social services including healthcare and others. So South Africa is no stranger to the discussion about patents because we had uh, one of the most severe HIV epidemics. We still have a very uh, severe burden from HIV and um, having HIV was a death sentence in the past because uh, drugs were not available to most people uh, unless you were very wealthy and uh, there was a substantial civil society campaign to unlock uh, access to antiretrovirals which was successful largely because it focused on the problems of patent protection and this is playing out again with COVID. We've seen with the development of vaccines and even certain medicines or treatments that producers of such health technologies hang on to the patents. And the patent allows you to prevent other people from manufacturing the same technology, even though it might be life-saving. So when you have uh, public goods that are essentially beneficial to all, it's unthinkable that there should be a blockage on access to the scientific knowledge there. Uh, and if patents were relaxed, if patents were relieved, as is proposed in the waiver for COVID, it would enable um, competition, it would enable prices to come down, and most importantly, it would enable local production of health technologies needed for COVID. And we're obviously talking mainly about vaccines, but it could be any kinds of technologies that are needed for COVID, for which uh, patents act as an obstacle. So I think it's very important that the German people realize that the uh, role of uh, vaccine producers is important, but it doesn't mean that they should have the only control over how vaccines are produced, who gets to buy them, at what price, in conditions of non-transparency. And in fact, uh, the uh, German companies manufacturing vaccines have gotten considerable public funding from the German government to produce those vaccines. So these are public goods. And it's possible for companies to make a fair profit, but not not create obstacles for developing countries to be able to access the technology in order to produce in the South. So I think technology transfer is absolutely critical and the German government and the German people should push for that, that if vaccines are developed, technology transfer must be part of the development of those vaccines. Germany is a leader in some of the vaccine development and it could play a key role and the waiver of intellectual property at the WTO would make that possible. And it doesn't mean that uh, companies are going to be bankrupted or lose the incentive to make vaccines. It just means that those vaccines are not prevented from being produced in low middle income countries and other locations where they can benefit billions of people. There aren't enough vaccine producers in the world at the moment and we need more and we need more of them in low middle income countries. And that will be a benefit to their health systems in the long term, not just producing vaccines for COVID, but other vaccines and other technologies. So this is an important opportunity for the German people to take a stand. I think that the public perception about 
the role of patents is really being challenged by the current situation. We've seen how vaccine nationalism has led to such gross inequality that many people, many countries are starting to come on board. There are over 100 countries now supporting the waiver when there were just a handful when it started. So I think there is a groundswell of recognition that something is wrong when a company can hold intellectual property in a way that prevents uh, poor, poorer people, poorer countries from accessing that. So I believe that this is an important moment because it, it's educational for the world to realize that the intellectual property system is only valuable if it serves a social purpose. And the social purpose is not about protecting the profits of the producer, it's about improving society. And there are other ways of ensuring that there is uh, incentives for research, uh, incentives for um, innovation, and those should be pursued, but not at the expense of access to these technologies. So the COVID moment is really an important moment for us to realize and rethink public goods and rethink the systems we have in place. The IP systems are not working. They've only been there for a few decades. They're not laws set by God or by nature. They're created by humans. And they were created in a way that protects certain people's interests and disadvantages the poor and the powerless. And that needs to change in the long term.